yes, here we go again, we turn the gas on, and what happens, oh, there is oxygen in there this time, I bet the bastards have left this one empty, don't know whether they always do, I have to change these cylinders, no, oh good, that makes a change. Okay then guys and girls, hello and welcome back to the UK Trailer Technician Trailer that fits toolbox, whatever you like. Anyway, uh, you can't go a week without having a little bit of gas action, can you? The old gas axe. This seems to be the thing, and I'm sure some of the guys that are doing fleet have to do at least two pairs of legs a week, don't they? We don't often get to do them nowadays, but I used to do them like nobody's business, like they were going out of fashion. And I like to get the gas on them because usually the bolts are either not very accessible or something else is going to happen. But yeah, no, we're onto a good one here actually because the chassis bracket is not bent, which is a bonus. I'll just show you that my gas cutting is clean. Look, there you go. There's uh, no destroyed metal. So here we go. Uh, yeah, gassing the bolts off. It can be quite dangerous and uh, you obviously don't want to be doing it on fuel tankers or anything. Um, that has flammable liquids or material on it because there is a chance it could get burnt but gas is always the way to go as far as I'm concerned it's the quickest way and most efficient however you have to check with the stores whether you have nuts and bolts because not all leg kits come with bolt kits do they some do you can get the J14 or the J16 kits can't you uh, however, yeah, this one didn't. This only came with the legs, so I gassed off the bolts and thinking everything was okay and then I had to go and sort some out. But yeah, this is what I do basically is just uh, stick the old gas out and uh, cut the heads off them and then just punch them through. Yeah, just like that. Yeah, they stay in place until you want to knock them out with a uh, punch. Yeah. So that's all good. Set of legs should take about two hours to do, or if you're in a real rush, even quicker. You have a big nozzle on your on your gas torch it'll be all right and oh look at that i didn't quite cut that one bitch so i'll just get the old gas out, out again time lapse it and there we go uh, so nuts and bolts yeah m14s nylocks and special just washers and there are m16s in here for the support uh, brackets as well wherever they are there we go it's quite a lot of hardware actually in this box and it is quite expensive but yes you can get a kit from Joss to do all that and you should order them every time you do a set of legs if you didn't know. Now how I do them I have the legs down and I square them up and then I do them up like a cylinder head first of all which is at diagonals and this just pulls the leg up a little bit squarer because if you do all one side first and then pull up the other side they do sometimes bend the wrong way so you want to you know just diagonally do it evenly um torque goes up to the dagger daggers on a little air gun uh, m14 bolts you can internet check what the torque setting is for them and of course cross bracing which you should really put the nuts and bolts in before you tighten anything up these are again these are uh, m16 aren't they yeah trailer fitters know this uh, some of you uh, other guys might not know but when you come across it you do now yeah so my little gun my little uh, uh, red rooster we might call it that i think that pulls up to about 130 newton meters in this setting and that's about the uh, the right setting for these landing leg bolts okay depending on the weight of the trailer will be depending on how many bolts you put in the landing legs okay so we have uh, 10 on each leg i will advise that you check when you have the uh, cross piecing that it hasn't been nipped up when you put new legs on if it does nip up what will happen is the legs are really hard to wind up and down and they'll be really noisy which means you have to take one leg off cut it down a bit and then put it back in and check it and it's always wise to check afterwards so there we go storage in okay check everything make sure nothing's loose and we're all happy to go that's it that's that job done and finished and the customer will be happy even though they'll get a big bill yeah so just show you this this is uh, mr cobb and uh, we don't often see him wielding a sledgehammer these days because you can see he's getting a little bit grey in the old beard there. But they're doing a set of shoes on the rear of the tipper. You know, some of you guys really don't know what it was like when we had those or that sort of work to do all the time when everything was on drums. 
and of course the pins seize in the uh, anchor brackets don't they so you've got to batter the shit out of them box new legs for this and uh, yeah they're bent they don't wind down so after that job was done up on the pallet and of course you've got to do it you've got to put it on the pallet so somebody can get rid of it for you and uh, yeah that's ready to go so happy happy bunny there and i'm going to show you something a really happy bunny today because look this is a spreader a spreader for the uh, porter power yeah now if you remember i told you about the spreader for the spring hangers we had a little bit of an issue where we had to use a threaded bar and a couple of nuts and some washers and what an ordeal this is it takes nearly an hour to spread one spring hanger and uh, yeah what we were doing was spreading these to 65 mil because there was a little bit of a mistake from a company who was doing refurbishments on trailers they put the wrong washers in silly people however we have to do rectification work and oh yeah this is the wiring loom i will show you about this later but yeah so this spreader it's not the best tool in the world but what it does it speeds up the job and it actually pushes these spring hangers out really really quickly because you can see it's right at the top of the spring hanger it's at the hardest place to push out so what we're doing is uh, using hydraulic um, power which is what i imagined first of all that's what they said they were going to supply us and uh, they did eventually and i'm being very careful not to crack the uh, spring hanger or push it out too far okay you can see it's got movement in it you push it a little bit further than what you should do and it springs back but they do go out uh, okay at the end of the day so there you go that's 65 millimeters there that's the exact size that it should be for a fell binder tanker okay because they're slightly different from uh, other spring hangers okay so uh, they have their special washers they're all done and i can uh, do them up now we have uh, six to do on uh, each trailer that we've got to rectify and there are quite a few to do <laughs> And uh, yeah, we're given three hours to do them. Now, somebody asked me about this uh, Sealy UJ for the three quarter. Does it work? Is it okay? Has it broken on you yet? No, it hasn't actually. Now, what I'm doing is just nipping these up on the lowest setting. Uh, but what I do with this UJ, especially on this job, is because the bolt is a little bit tight, I just whiz it. Okay. Until it comes loose you know this one don't you just keep cracking it until all the shit comes out of the bolt well it's at an angle here because the tire's in the way yeah so the uj as you can see is working really really well yeah so <laughs> this has its issues because when you straighten them out they're not always straight they do deform a little bit and uh, you'll probably not see this problem but if you are aware of it yeah even spreading things out they don't always go back to exactly where they were but we uh, we are doing the job bit by bit and uh, rectifying somebody else's fuck up now it's not really their fault they don't know they don't know now um with these shock absorbers any shock absorbers honestly guys always lubricate the bolts now we use a, a a spray which is uh, ceramic or ceramic spray which DAF supplies the TRP uh, part and this is really good for bits to uh, not seize up so yeah basically I'll the rattle these up the top bolts are 325 and the bottom ones are 480 or I think they were don't quote me on that but as you can see here this is the other issue we're having once they've been spreaded because they've been twisted the wrong way the bolts don't always go in straight as you can see that and that needed a little bit more rectification before i could get that bolt to go straight through because that is twisted luckily it's not cracked and aluminium is forgiving up to a certain point however there is a limit to it especially when it's got weight on it anyway there's the trp stuff ceramics grease and that is actually uh, designed for brakes or uh, um, clutch um, center uh, spigots yeah and it doesn't drip at all so that is pretty good you can use normal grease on the spring hanger um shock absorber bolts but yeah good tool it's a good tool this pushes out makes a job really quick which is what we need because uh, yeah we only get three hours to do six shoppers shock absorbers so yeah that makes it half an hour each so the uh yeah uj's working okay that's a sealy premier one i can't remember how much i paid for it the weakest point is the pin inside just inside there if it's going to go anywhere it will go there okay 
so that's the jdf or as we say job done and finished i can put this back in the box three quarter mito socket yeah that's been doing a lot of work for quite a few years and uh, yeah both of these fit together quite well you'll probably see it in action again it's it's in more action with these trailers at the moment for doing the shock absorber bolts and anything else but it's there you use it don't you anyway um they had the, the uh, asbok trailer junction boxes once i get hold of this what they have on them you probably recognize these if you uh, see any asbok tra uh, wiring on trailers these are for the led lights so this is a resistor block and you can see here this one's blistered because inside you have resistors which emulate light bulbs believe it or not which is a waste of money but led you don't draw enough current so you need them for the indicators and the side markers and the brake lights and the such like yeah so that fits on top of the junction box eingang is in german which means in from von Fahrzug, which is from the truck Fahrzug. yeah i've been learning german by the way ausgang out yeah, Ausgang, if you've ever been to an airport, Germany, Ausgang means going out, yeah, which is exit, yeah, that's where the power comes out. Anyway, the Asbok junction boxes, yeah, they're actually uh, sort of uh, clusters, yeah, so you can see where the wires are clustered, it's a pretty good idea actually, there's a circuit board underneath there. So you can uh, fit your fittings in, so you have clusters for the uh, um, fog lamps for instance, uh, which is four I think in total, and these connectors do not come off, you have to uh, unclip them, and I'll show you that in a little while. Yep, so it's British standard uh, trailer wiring colours up to a point until you get the auxiliary, then it all goes tits up. But this is a very, very busy junction box, because there is a lot fitted to the back of this trailer, you have uh, lights and... Uh, um extra bits and pieces so it's all been uh, fitted in but you have a main in which is from the main wiring loom okay which is from the front of the trailer this has been tapped into and you can see where i did a, uh, <coughs> a refit of a loom and uh, this thing <laughs> i was going to leave them there but never mind eh? anyway back to the resistor block this is for the indicator side markers reverse lamp and such like the new variant of actually is a slightly different and it requires a little bit of modification because it has two yellows and two greens which is flashes okay british standard wiring so you can unclip the rest of them except for these because they come in from the loom from the uh, socket at the front okay so that's the in okay from Fahrzug what you need to do is cut them yeah and then you have to scotch them into uh, putting it onto the old junction box if you're using the old junction box like I'm doing yeah so I'll strip this so I've got parts as well and things like this which is the out problem with this is you have to cut these anyway to get that plug out and these connectors out to get the board out as well so uh, keep that in mind if you're doing one of them it's okay to snip as long as you fix them back in properly yeah so it's all plug in except for these two wires which uh, come in from the main loom from the sockets into the resistor block and then back out to the board and off to the connectors for the lights and the such like yeah it is actually easier than what, what it looks like because underneath all there you just have all the connectors so connectors do not come off until you push a clip right so uh, you push the clip the clip is in there I don't know if you can see that properly but that's a little uh, spigot if you like okay I'll just stop here I forgot to tell you this is the uh, resistor block all it is is a consumer unit so you add it to the junction box you don't put it in line except for the uh, two indicators which go through the resistor and back out again the rest of them just plug onto the board and they act as consumers so the unit won't think that there's a lack of voltage because that's what it's sensing in the unit if not you get warning lights kick off in the cab and then the driver gets upset and then you have to find out why so yeah basically use a little screwdriver okay these are good connectors you push it and then lift it off yeah and they'll come off the problem is of course is locating and everything gets chucked in on top of each other and the more stuff that gets put in the junction box the worse it seems to be some of you guys know this some of you don't <laughs> especially like when you're trying to uh, uh, access a connector underneath that bird's nest uh, the brown obviously is side markers white is earth okay white on all trailers is earth or white tracer is earth yeah so that's the main earth that's out and then black for side marker 
BL black uh, left, so that's left hand side marker. BR brown is right hand. So I changed the uh, whole main loom and then I had to lash everything back in. Yeah, there's always excess with the uh, trailer wiring and it's, even if it's modular, you're still going to get a load of stuff left over. And you notice how I've uh, connected these with the cable ties, lashed them up. I've not crunched the wires, I've put loops in them. These clips for Asbok modular kits need to be put into place, otherwise they come out. And again, loops as well, rather than trying to crush the wires so they look tidy because they never will. It's better to have them looped or big loops like this, okay? That's more of a professional way of doing it, should I say. And I learned this from a guy who uh, wired up trailers all the time. Yeah, I'm not the tidiest of guys, but like this again i put the main loom in and now there's an excess part of the loom which is to do with the tail guard or soft dock which is the wiring the sensors uh, they go back to the ecu so you can see that's the extra stuff here yeah the main loom is underneath there so that's been lashed in first and then this lot has been put on the top and lashed in again not crunching any of the wires up putting loops on it and yeah that goes right the way up to the ecu yeah so you see how that's done yeah, that's all standard. So for the last thing I want to show you is a uh, starting problem on a Land Rover. Um, have the fuse there and then we have a relay which is the start relay. And yes, I do have to look up on the wiring diagram for the colours. Now, white red is from the ignition switch. Brown uh, with red tracer is to the start motor. Brown with grey tracer is the power feed to the relay. And the black and orange is the ECU which applies earth okay for the uh, trigger okay so basically what i had to do is ascertain that there was power there at that relay so what i'm doing here is looking at the power which comes into the relay which is 12.3 it has a drop because the battery is about 12.6 okay so you're looking at 12.4 that's 0.2 of a drop okay so now i want to look at the other side where the power goes into the starter or to the starter yeah now I'll just turn the ignition key and that should yeah that's giving me power and there's even more of a voltage drop there but at least we've got 12 volts something so the relay is not faulty and the ignition switch is not faulty and the earth ECU supplied is not faulty either so what I need to do is now trace the wire which goes to the solenoid on the starter motor yeah so this wire here with a red tracer on it it should be visible at the starter motor yep so I can actually eliminate that from uh, investigations right now and the fuse which supplies the starter is this one uh, and that was okay but with a Land Rover <laughs> yeah these Land Rover defenders there's a starter motor under there somewhere now I'm looking from the bonnet down to the starter motor side and to be honest with you these are an utter nightmare so Paul came up with this little neat trick of cutting the inner wing away yeah and of course that's only a little bit of plastic because the inner wings are now plastic and not galvanized steel so under the pipes where the oil cooler is and the thermostat outlet and all of that in there you see that wire just there that is the wire I'm looking for so what I'll do is I'll uh, yeah you can see the connectors there can't you okay so what I'm going to do is put a multimeter on to that and then turn the key and see if I get power there it's not to say that it isn't broken or it's got some sort of resistance in it okay because we do what you can just do is jump at the power from one connector to the other right so there's the wire there and I want to test that to see if it has power that'll ascertain if the starter motor is knackered or not now this is the third starter motor that is eaten okay so I've got a good earth We've got uh, our man who <laughs> likes wandering around with a brush all day. That's uh, Ivor Biggin. Yeah, you'll see him comment sometimes on the YouTube channel. And what I want him to do is actually look at uh, the multimeter when I turn the key to see if there is power going down to the starter motor. Well, you've already seen that. There's quite a considerable voltage drop there. Hang on. Turn the key, 11.8, 11.9 volts which means there actually is a voltage drop in the system. However, what I was also looking for was to see if the system was hanging in because the starter motors are getting burnt out, but it isn't. So I'm eliminating the ignition switch and the relay as well. 
problem is this is eating starter motors so uh, what we have to do is put another starter motor on it and then recheck and try and find we'll get to the bottom of why the starter motors are failing so quickly yeah right then guys i'm going to keep this waffle down to a minimum 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 yeah so what does bpw stand for yeah is it something rude like big puffy willies <laughs> i don't know yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know. Yeah. I know they think transport, though, which is obvious because it's the uh, haulage business stuff, isn't it? Hmm. So, anyway, yeah, got services Citroen. She's back on the road. MOT's passed. Uh, nipped into the parts shop, and there was a lady serving, and she started going on about conspiracy theories. Now, if you've never met anybody like that, then run a mile. Please, just run a mile, because they just talk shit. They're the Jehovah's Witnesses of YouTube. They believe everything that they're told on YouTube and then regurgitate it. And yes, I do know all the stories because, yes, I did sit there when I was on furlough and listen to a lot of bullshit and I don't really want to listen to it. I've got my own opinions and I'll keep myself at that. So, uh, yeah, failed. This Shitron failed on boom. A few things, minors, majors and advisories. Uh, windscreen cracked. Yeah, well, that's obvious. You've seen that in the videos, haven't you? That's been done, replaced. Uh, registration plate lamp. Headlamp was a bit misty, so the uh, the beam setting wasn't quite right. Brake pipe corroded, but not to fail. Yeah, exhaust, a little bit of a hole on it. That's an advisory and tyre worn close to legal limit. Yeah, I know about all of these, but I put this in um, to see whether she'd uh, fail on emissions or not, because she wasn't running right. I don't know why. Um, but it passed on the emission, so I thought, yeah, okay, well, I'll, I'll put a screen in, 150 quid cash, um, and it had to be cash, otherwise I'd have had to wait two weeks to get a screen fitted, yeah, uh, uh, more of a price, yeah, so that was the way to go, and yeah, she's now at 108,000 miles, I do 400 miles a week, so that's going to clock up some miles for the next MOT, which, of course, I'm going to do all the jobs, get serviced, and anything else that needs doing, I'll throw some money at her now, knowing that it'll be all right. But she does cut out every now and then, usually when it's really wet and I splash through a puddle or something like that, yeah. Uh, electrical connector or something, I don't know. Yeah, so, anyway, um, what I want to tell you guys uh, is uh, on the last video I uploaded, which is about a tactical torch, it looks like a cigar, there's a competition buried in that video, and you know what I'm like now, I do covert giveaways every now and then, this is going to be a covert giveaway, so if you're interested maybe in winning this torch here, which is actually pretty good, then uh, just watch near the end of the video, and uh, yeah, just follow the competition rules, make a comment, and then I'll uh, do a draw in a couple of weeks time. Can't say no more than that. Anyway, I'll keep the waffle down to a minimum, and I will say see you in the next video. <laughs> okay, guys. All right.